Hi friends, my name is Tris, and this is No Boilerplate, focusing on fast, technical videos. Today, I hope to show you that Rust is ready for use in your company in production now. Not only that, but if you're not using Rust, you're missing out on a sea change in how we build software. Rust is 16 years old, has more packages than NPM did in 2012, has first-class support on all enterprise clouds, and has in-browser support with WebAssembly for five years. It has been the most loved language according to the largest developer survey on the planet for seven years. That's every single year since 1.0, and it's not even close. I don't think Rust is perfect, but I think Rust can allow you to write perfect code. While it isn't perfect, Rust's compromises are excellent. The Rust team seems to have chosen the exact features I wish I had in all the other languages I've used over the last 15 years. Rust has all the features I want, and none of the features I don't. It's not even that interesting a list. Rust isn't flashy, it's boring. You know what isn't boring? Seafaring in the ancient Mediterranean. If you were a sailor or a merchant, you would understand that you would just lose ships to the sea, now and then. So it was, so it has always been. Most of the sea was unexplored, and there were monsters, no doubt, taking the ships. These were the risks that you had to accept to operate on the high seas. You know what else isn't boring? Software. And I don't mean that in a good way. In our field in 2022, everyone accepts that there are some things you just have to deal with in order to write software. Some lies programmers believe about software include, but are not limited to, that software must be built with unknowable layers of abstraction, scaling horizontally is the best way to solve your problems, syntax is your enemy, Low-level speed and high-level ergonomics are mutually exclusive, and if you don't use YAML and JavaScript to solve your problems, you will have to use XML and Java. I have been a web developer for 15 years, writing backends in Python, Ruby, and Node, and frontends in various JavaScript frameworks. I am tired of writing bullshit that I can't guarantee, and I'm not alone. Linus Torvalds is not an easy man to please. As you probably know, Linus created and oversees the development of the Linux kernel. He is a detail-oriented man who cares about reliability over all else. And yet, when Rust support was recently merged into the Linux kernel, many veteran developers decried this step as bowing to a flashy, fashionable new language. The idea that Linus would approve of Rust due to peer pressure is laughable to those who know his reputation. Linus is absolutely right to be so conservative. Nearly every computer used to show you this video, from your Wi-Fi router, to the network systems in your school, company, and ISP, to Google's global video distribution network, is running this kernel. There are islands of Mac devices, but Linux is the ocean. There are clouds of Windows networks, but Linux is the sky. We are not talking about your pet projects or your company's production projects. We're not even talking about real-time banking software and hospital systems that are shipped when they satisfy the business requirements. We are talking about Linux. Linux has to be perfect. Rust is not the first language to be tried as an alternative to C to write the Linux kernel. C++ was proposed 25 years ago, but failed to meet Linux's and the community's extremely high standards. C++ is not good enough for the Linux kernel, but Rust is. And Rust, despite being a better language to write the Linux kernel in than C, is also a fantastic web development language, on the back end and front end, with superpowers JavaScript can only dream of. This is Jack Dorsey, who built Twitter. Twitter started out using a Ruby on Rails monolith, then switched to a Scala backend and microservices. Jack didn't build Twitter with C or C++, even though they are fast. He's a web developer. He used a high-level language. Rust is also a very high-level language, and the web development side of the community has delivered. Rocket, for example, is one of the handful of stable, feature-rich back-end web development frameworks the Rust community has built. If you write your web server in Rocket and your program compiles, many things are guaranteed before you even test them, such as all get params are handled, all return values are valid, no SQL injection, there are no invalid data pathways in your code, no memory errors, no null pointer exception, no nulls anywhere in Rust, as a matter of fact. Rust has no heavyweight, slow abstractions. Code compiles down to for loops and if statements, running on bare metal. Your app will have a predictable behavior profile as you scale, unlike Java, JavaScript, and Go. This predictable runtime behavior is something Discord recently adopted Rust to achieve. By the way, did you know I run a Discord server? Come chat about Rust, programming, or my other projects, Lost Terminal and Modem Prometheus, too. For a few years, Discord's backend was mostly Go and Erlang, a functional concurrent programming language and system. 
But Go was not fast enough for Discord. Or it was, but every two minutes there would be these latency spikes. Those who have worked on distributed systems already know what the problem is, because no matter what the language, this kind of spiky graph always has the same culprit garbage collection pauses. Once the Discord team exhausted all optimizations for Go, they had to switch to a language without a garbage collector, and they chose Rust. Even with just basic optimization, Rust was able to outperform their hand-tuned Go version. After a bit of profiling and performance optimization, Rust beat Go on every single performance metric. Latency, CPU, and memory were all better in the Rust version. But you don't have to wait until you experience production issues to adopt a language without the compromises of a garbage collector. Rust is ready today. Let's look at another example. Cloudflare recently rewrote their core proxy service because Nginx was not fast enough. I'll say that again. Nginx was not fast enough. The fastest industry standard web proxy written in C was not fast enough. Pingora, their pure Rust replacement, uses 70% less CPU and 67% less RAM while serving 1 trillion requests a day. What Cloudflare did is move from a two-component system, Nginx scripted with Lua, to a single-component system, Pingora, written in Rust. This is an example of Rust's universality. You do not need a highly striated system with slow applications written in high-level languages and fast plumbing written in C. Rust can do it all. So Rust can be used in your entire stack, from bare metal chips through back-end web development to in-browser with WebAssembly. There are some tasks that the Rust community can currently help you with more, and some they can help you with less. You can still do everything if you're very clever, but in one case you'll be able to rely upon more community code. And it's here I recommend you start, just as Discord and Cloudflare did with lightning fast back-end web development. I keep saying fast, but what do I mean by that? Rust is as fast as C, and in a world where most popular languages are many times, sometimes hundreds of times slower, this is paradigm changing. But how much faster is it than the other languages we use to write the web today? Well, it's complicated. Benchmarks differ wildly. I'm sorry if the numbers in your favourite benchmark don't match mine. The only thing we can hope benchmarks agree on is the approximate order of fastest languages and slowish languages. This is my attempt at generalizing benchmarks into categories of similar speed languages. The values here are deliberately approximate, but you get the idea. Each category has enormous error margins of the order of about 50%, and even then many languages swap around depending on what type of benchmark you do. But whatever benchmarks you look at, Rust dominates. The elephant in the room is that most of the time pure language speed doesn't affect your app as much as these numbers suggest, because we're waiting for network, disk, or other I.O. Cloudflare were using Lua until recently, for example. But a very important area that does matter is in development ergonomics. Language speed affects development time enormously. If your tests run in one second, pipelines deploy instantly, transpilation is all done inside the compiler, and the language is rich enough that linting itself is also handled inside the compiler. Then you can iterate faster, both your team and all external contributors. You and I would not be here talking about Rust if it was another fringe language that people are excited about but don't use. Perhaps I'd be talking about Haskell, or Clojure, or Julia, three languages I love very much, but would not build a team around today. There are more Rust projects on GitHub than Scala, Swift, and Kotlin. Another metric to look at is how many third-party packages Rust has. The answer is about 100,000, about the same as NPM had in 2012. Rust's package manager is very clever and worth a detour to talk about. Rust's package registry is called crates.io, and the package tool is called Cargo. When running a package registry, you have the problem of what to do with bad package versions that either have unacceptable bugs or security vulnerabilities. We want two incompatible things. We want packages to be idempotent and perennial, but what we build today should build in a decade. But we also want to allow package authors to be able to remove bad versions that should not be used. The way Cargo solves this is clever. Package versions can't be deleted, they can only be yanked. A yanked package can still be used if it is in your project's lock file, so existing projects will not break. But new projects cannot use this version, Cargo will display an error and advise an upgrade. This is an example of Rust's commitment to backwards compatibility without compromising new features. Rust has learned from both C and C++ and has a sensible middle ground, as illustrated by this comment. Code written today will be guaranteed to compile in all future versions of Rust, while still being able to be used with future code we write in new versions of Rust. This system is called Rust Editions. As of time of recording, we are using edition 2021. 
This is what is meant when we say there will be no Rust 2.0, as that suggests a breaking change. Rust will never have breaking changes. As I have said in previous videos, the last 40 years have been written in C. The next 40 years will be written in Rust. It's not a question of if you will adopt Rust, but when. Rust is ready now, are you? If you'd like to see what you can write in Rust, click the top video. I used it to make a fun retro computer visualization for my sci-fi podcast, Lost Terminal. Or if urban fantasy is more your bag, click the bottom video to listen to a strange and beautiful podcast I produce called Modem Prometheus. If you'd like to support my work, head to patreon.com forward slash no boilerplate. Transcripts and compile checked markdown source code are available on GitHub, links in the description, and corrections are in the pinned errata comment. Thank you so much for watching, talk to you on Discord.